So Bell Helmets has been amazing at bringing you fantastic products for years and years and years. And one of their best is the Bell Moto 3. You've probably seen our review on this, but this is an icon. This has been an icon and it is for a reason. It's got the peak, it's got the chin bar, it's got great style. And what we're really gonna talk about is the new MX-9 Adventure, which is the new icon. This is the future icon in my opinion, because man, I just love this helmet. It's comfortable, it's vented, it's got a really convenient flip up uh, face shield and it's still got the peak. The styling, yeah, is a little bit more modern than the, than the Moto 3, but well, I ride a little bit more modern bike, so that's great. Honestly, this is my favorite helmet of all time and I can't wait to tell you why. Okay, so the MX-9 Adventure. This is my favorite helmet and this is my personal daily rider helmet. Why do I like this? Well, it's got a peak, kind of adventure style. It's a little bit of dirt bike and it's a little bit of street bike because it's also got the flip down visor. I've found that ventilation with these helmets is really good. Um, if you start to feel hot, it's really easy to quickly flip up that visor and you don't have that hassle of like, if you're, if you're awesome and you've got a, a Bell Moto 3, these are cool, they're great. They've got the peak, they've got the kind of the full face, the chin guard, but you're gonna run these with goggles or sunglasses and eventually that's enough to kind of like wear you out if you're on a long like road trip where the visor actually seals off the helmet, keeps the water out if you're in a rainstorm, etc. So these are cool around town, but if you're really serious about logging miles and running adventure stuff, this guy is your, this, this guy is your helmet. So we've got the, the black helmet here and it's got the iridium shield. You can see there's a little bit of mirroring on that. That's super cool. I, I really like these. They're great for uh, photo shoots and they piss off your cameraman because they can always see themselves in them. Uh, here is the, the basic just dark smoke shield. We've got clear over here, uh, another dark smoke, but mine, mine's the special one. I've got a transitions lens. Now that doesn't mean there's a gradient in this. That means that it actually changes its tint depending on the ambient light conditions outside. So it worked great for me. If I show up at, you know, show up to work at six in the morning, I've got to deal with sunrise and I'm looking at it and it's just blinding. Well, this was going to darken down to almost as dark as the dark smoke shield. But then when there's not a lot of light, you, as you can see right now, because there's not a lot of light in here, it's crystal clear, as clear as the clear shield. Transitions lenses have been around for a while. You've seen them, they're super nerdy, they're totally dorky, but whatever, man, these things work awesome. I'll be honest with you, there's a slight purple uh, hue or purple tint. It's not quite as dark as the, as the dark smoke, but whatever, I don't have to change my shield. This works awesome. So show up at six in the morning, need the, that shield for the, uh, the sunrise, and then work until 11 o'clock at night, go home with a crystal clear shield, and you never had to muck around with changing out that visor. And I liked it so much that I had my good friend Josh Trevino do a custom paint job on it. So if you really like the way that this is done, contact Josh Trevino at trevinocustoms.com, and he can do something similar. It won't be the same, because he is an artist and will make you your very own helmet that is not like anything else on the road. So even though I've got this transition lens, and that's for my convenience, just because I don't want to have two lenses, it really isn't that difficult to change them out. So it's just two thumb screws, and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to just kind of quickly undo these, and you can change out your shield. Not quite as easy as some of the fancier, more expensive helmets, but really, that's not that difficult. For sake of this video, I'm gonna leave that alone. And also, if for whatever reason you felt like not having the peak because you're gonna do like, I don't know, land speed racing or something crazy, you can also just remove the peak with another simple, simple thumb screw. So these things aren't permanently attached. You can just unscrew them and change the way that everything works and everything looks, no big deal. I will admit that uh, you can notice the peak on the freeway a little bit, but as long as you stay with speeds under about 80 miles an hour, it's not that big a deal. And for me, I don't, I'm not bothered by having this peak. Yes, you will notice a little bit of tug or a little bit of pull here and there, but it's not like it's gonna take your head off and just be aware of it. And I prefer to have it because of those times where the sun is in that 
specific spot and even the tinted shield is just nice. Tip your head, just like a baseball cap. So even though this helmet vents really well, I ride in Texas. It's hot in Texas. I am going to sweat and eventually my helmet gets uh, a little less than fresh. So fortunately this liner is removable and it's easy to do. There's only four snaps. You just kind of grab those, just pop them out and then this stanky mess goes in the wash. Good idea to just do some simple stuff like a little bit of wool light in the sink. Otherwise, if you put this in the machine with like all your jeans and stuff, it could get turned into a tangled mess. But I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to wash a helmet liner. Putting it back in just as easy. It's only four snaps. So that is uh, really useful. You might, if you're very astute, notice that some of these helmets are slightly different sizes. They run three different shell sizes, which is kind of important if you want to avoid that bobblehead effect that nobody on the planet likes. But they run three different shell sizes, so they run uh, extra small, small, medium, large, and then extra large, double extra large. So this is a large, this is a small, this is a large, this is a medium, and this is the double XL. So you can kind of see the difference in the size of the shells and that makes a huge difference in terms of that awful awful bobblehead effect i i really do believe in this helmet this this is no bs this is my daily rider and because i've worn this and talked so highly about it you might think that this is a bunch of uh, inventory that we've just pulled out for this demonstration but it's not this is actually individual helmets for people that work at revival and they have bought these helmets with their own hard-earned money because you don't make a lot of money working at revival this one's Corona's, this one's Gage's, this one's Auerbox, and actually this one's my other one, but shh, I have two, sorry. Um, anyway, these are, all, these are all good helmets, and these are the ones that we've chosen to use, and these are the ones that we've paid for with our own hard-earned money, because they're just that good. So, the MX-9 Adventure, my all-time favorite helmet, because it's not that expensive, it works really well, it does absolutely everything, and it works on any bike, any style, any time, just, this is the helmet, man. You gotta get one. Thanks for watching.